it's absolutely critical that the first responders know how to properly deal with advanced technology vehicles. They show up on the scene of the accident, have to keep themselves safe, have to keep the uh, occupants of the car safe, have to be able to extract them and do it all safely, and then they have to deal with all of the media questions about safety of the vehicle and is it really safe to drive these cars. Welcome to an overview of the Clean Cities Learning Program's first responder safety training brought to you by the U.S. Department of Energy Clean Cities Program, National Alternative Fuels Training Consortium at West Virginia University and their program partners. The Clean Cities Learning Program's first responder safety training developed by the National Alternative Fuels Training Consortium raises awareness, fosters a greater understanding and provide educational materials and training for alternative fuel and advanced technology vehicle emergencies. I think it's critical for first responders to know how to respond to alt fuel and advanced technology vehicle accidents. Uh, as I'm learning today, there are a lot of unique qualities to alternative fuels that um, first responders need to know about. For example, uh, some of the, the fires that may happen from E85 or biodiesel accidents require a special type of foam and if first responders aren't educated about that then they may actually cause more damage. The first responder safety training program is specifically designed for certified first responders, emergency medical technicians, firefighters, mechanics, police officers, and paramedics. However, the program can also include volunteer fire departments, community first responders, airport ground personnel, campus police, search and rescue personnel, security officers, bodyguards, utility workers, and even teachers. This production will provide you with an overview of the curriculum and participant feedback from the first responder safety training, which will allow you to decide if it's beneficial to first responders in your Clean Cities Coordinator areas. I think it's very in-depth. I think that um, a lot from, what the, from the questions that are being asked, uh, it's covering the, uh, the information that they need to have. Um, so I think that the curriculum itself that was put together by the National Alternative Fuels Training Consortium is right on from what I've understood from the uh, comments that are being made from the first responders. Um, it, doesn't leave a, it doesn't leave a lot of room for questioning, but um, if there are questions, there, the answers are right there ready for them. So I, I think this is a really good curriculum for this class. Program, first responders will learn about key topics that include dual properties and characteristics, vehicle components, vehicle identification, and first responder standard operation procedures. Uh, we just went outside in 23 degree weather to look at an F-150 uh, uh, flex fuel vehicle and a biodiesel Jeep Liberty. And so they were very enthusiastic about seeing, you know, hands on the vehicle and, and um, what they need to do. The instructor had already gone through the, the modules for those vehicles. So for them to be able to go out and actually look at them was even that much better for them. Responders are exposed to alternative fuels which encompass various fuel tanks and delivery systems, unique safety considerations, flammability levels, and how to safely respond to the incidents where alternative fuels are present. First arrived at the scene of the accident, I didn't correlate the, the vehicle as being a hybrid vehicle at first because I think we respond to so many accidents that we do not have vehicles. Uh, that are not hybrids or, or, you know, have any kind of alternative fuel. So you kind of routinely go up to that automobile not thinking about uh, the vehicle actually being a vehicle that may have some kind of uh, different types of fuel uh, on the vehicle and could be hazardous.
responders also become familiar with the individual components of alternative fuel vehicles, how to locate them, and safely work around them during an accident. I think the most important thing I've learned is, of course, the dangers and the, uh, the effects that could take place if you're not familiar with what you're walking up on and what you're dealing with. Uh, I think a lot of people are not aware of that. Uh, I had mentioned that a lot of our record drivers have no training on this at all. Finally, first responders are able to identify and distinguish between different alternative fuels or advanced technology vehicles, as well as employ appropriate safety equipment and even respond to media inquiries concerning alternative fuels and advanced technology vehicles. The response has been very good. We've got three or four of our graduates in here, which is edifying. Um, they are all very interested in it. They've been trained at our school and know the basics of gas and diesel, but this is all pretty new stuff for them, so it's uh, been an interesting experience. Everybody I've talked to seems like they've uh, learned a lot today and uh, picking up some safety tips on how to do it properly.